Hello everybody, my name is Mark Sage and I'm the Executive Director of the AREA, which stands for Augmented Reality Enterprise Alliance. Uh, we are the only global membership funded not-for-profit alliance dedicated to help and accelerate the adoption of enterprise AR by supporting the growth of a comprehensive ecosystem. Super excited to be here today with uh, one of our sponsor members and for this fireside chat. So it's my great pleasure to introduce Umar, um, who's the VP and Head of Growth for AR Products at PTC. Umar, perhaps you'd like to just introduce yourself. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, yep, my name is Umar Arshad. I uh, head up growth for augmented reality products at PTC. And what that means is um, you know, I'm tasked with helping our customers finally unlock the promise of augmented reality for the industrial world. So we get to spend a lot of time with uh, a lot of companies using augmented reality in the real world applications to, to solve real world problems. As we know, the world's been a difficult place for the last um, number of months, but actually augmented reality is really helping companies all around the world. So today we're going to talk about augmented reality from a business continuity perspective. So I'm going to ask Umar a few questions and he's, I'm sure, going to enlighten us, enlighten us with some great answers. So Umar, what do you see as some major challenges affecting organizations as they are, in many cases, forced to operate from their businesses remotely at the moment? You know, one of the things that we've learned over the past few months is, as we've gone through COVID collectively across the world is that that this particular crisis has exposed vulnerabilities in the industrial world that perhaps in the past would have actually been considered strengths. So those characteristics that made some of the industrial companies more successful pre-COVID, things like hyper-optimized supply chains and manufacturing processes and very uh, specialized skill sets within their employees have kind of been flipped on their head and become those vulnerabilities um, and and in this world of COVID and you know in the emerging world post COVID, what we see is agility and resilience being the characteristics that are going to be rewarded. Uh, the world is going through a lot of changes, and uh, technology is here to help them. And AR, in particular, is one of those technologies. And so, what we're seeing is old challenges that existed pre-COVID also be exacerbated. Uh, in the current stage that we're in. And we foresee those trends continuing and new challenges emerging. So things that companies um, weren't really ready for uh, becoming problems that they're going to need to be able to address moving forward. Uh, things that we've seen, uh, those, those challenges take the form of are dramatic shifts in demand. So, you know, companies that were creating products for commercial, you know, larger commercial applications, having to retool their manufacturing lines to create products for consumers, as an example. We've seen companies that were creating, customers that were creating car parts now have to create ventilators and how do we help them do that? We're seeing uh, shifts in, in how service is delivered. When in a world where uh, service technicians can't travel, how do you help customers self-resolve some issues? And AR allows you to do that through remote collaboration. We've seen it shifts in how uh, employees are trained, not just the, because they can't show up and actually be taught in person, but also because uh, they have to new, learn new skills so rapidly um, because, because of these shifts in demand, because of the way that the, the companies have had to adjust to the market. Um, and how do you skill people in, in new uh, capabilities quickly? And AR is, is, a, is a great solution for that. And we're seeing shifts in how products are sold and how products are marketed. When you can't go to the showroom and see something in person, how do we bring the showroom to you? And that's another great application for AR. Thank you, Umar. That was, that was really insightful. It, it's fair to say that augmented reality are really helping companies in these difficult times be able to adapt to the new world and actually many of them flourish and using this technology in all sorts of different ways. Umar, why do you think augmented reality is a crucial tool for companies looking to help with not only business continuity, but resilience as well? So Mark, one definition of resiliency is the ability to recover from or adjust easily to adversity or change. And of course, that's critical today, right? Uh, we are in a moment of massive change. It's an accelerant across the board for many different trends that have already been ongoing. But Unlocking agility that continues beyond uh, this current moment is kind of where 
the benefits of AR really come into play, right? So we know that it's helping our, our customers deal with the adversity of COVID as it stands today, but these are trends that are gonna continue well beyond the moment as, as we're facing it today. So things like expanding uh, collaboration beyond the kind of in-person collaboration to remote collaboration, being able to provide support for customers uh, outside of an in-person service technician showing up to do some of the work, but to allow self-service and remote service applications. That's really critical as an, as an area in the future as well. And within the company itself, understanding and enriching how you're training your workforce, not just in scenarios that they wouldn't encounter on their day-to-day -day activities, but in uh, being able to expand their skill sets quickly if they take on a new role or if things change within the organization. So resiliency in your, in your workforce and is super critical. And then being able to capture knowledge as it quickly evolves out in the front lines. You know, we have solutions to capture that knowledge that we believe are breakthrough solutions. And those, those, those the value of being able to do that extend well beyond COVID. So we see this as these are all important uh, trends today that we're helping to address, but this is the new normal. This is how the world's going to be moving forward, and and we're here to stay with these solutions to start to deliver uh, un incredible capabilities to our customers moving forward. Thanks, Uma. I think that's really interesting. You know, certainly in my experience, we've seen lots of companies using AR in the short term, as we've been talking about kind of business continuity, improving their resilience, but also the long term. Um, you know, being able to do things that they've never done before to enable their workforce to do some of the use cases that you have talked about. So really improving their performance and helping them not only survive, but thrive in this, uh, in our industries and the different work that they're doing. So you know, I think AR has a short and a long term uh, benefit to these companies implementing the technology. Been lucky enough to speak to many organizations um, since the, the COVID pandemic. Nearly all of them have said that they wish that they were further forward with their AR kind of strategy and specifically around remote assistance. You know, and I, and I think that really shows the benefit of technology, but I'd like to get your insights of how practically these companies can deploy this technology. Uh, so we've definitely seen um, the same question from customers and for us, you know, how do you, uh, the, the practical uh, application of the technology starts first with ensuring that it's available, the information is available to who needs it. So whatever that information is that you're, you're looking to deploy using augmented reality. And so that's a critical piece. And then making sure it's accessible. Um, and accessibility is, comes in many forms, but one of it is, is it meeting those, uh, the end users where they're gonna need it. So if it's something like remote assistance, you know, are, is it available on the devices that the uh, end users are going to be using? And, you know, so that means considering the solution that you have, is it device agnostic or is it tethered to, to only one type of device? Um, is that, if it is still tethered to one device, is that device readily available wherever that need for that information will be? So factoring all those in, those are those are important kind of practical considerations and being able to to uh, deliver knowledge, the right knowledge to the right person uh, in the right way. Mapping that out helps ensure that it's actually going to be useful. I'm sure many of our viewers are now thinking, well, what are the couple of things I need to consider that will be key for my company's success with um, AR? It might be great to get your insights and thoughts on that. So, uh, you know, Mark, it's funny, a lot of companies um, they, that approach us and, and ask us about AR, they think that uh, the kind of the technical implications of the t of augmented reality are going to be the hurdle. But it's actually, uh, you know, everything else kind of beyond that. A lot of companies, including PTC, we're working to make AR simple to use and deploy. The hard parts are just making sure that you're deploying it for the right reasons within your organization. So being able to identify a use case or a business problem that is worth the investment to prove out the value and then scale beyond that first application is, is, is one of the most important things that we advise all of our customers. You know, we've got a practice that helps our customers do that before they even purchase the product so that we ensure they successfully deploy it. 
that's how important we believe it is. And along with that, to, to make sure there is executive sponsorship, we know that um, that there are folks in the front lines that are that are willing to try this technology, but um, to have support kind of um, at the executive level will ensure that not just it's used for one application, but it's deployed at scale. So that's another critical piece that we always recommend for our customers as they go on their journey with AR. Um, building the right team uh, is 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 critical. You know, the best and most successful uh, customers that we have are ones that have decided to embrace this technology internally and have created internal centers of excellence. And we believe that is a great way to uh, bring the technology in and start to applying, apply it within your company, because only you know the problems of your organization best. Um, you need to, in the process, you know, there are the traditional considerations when you're purchasing and, and using new technology. You have to make sure you've got an IT infrastructure. Do you have the connectivity that's needed? Do you have a strategy for the devices, right? A device deployment strategy. Do you have um, the infrastructure to support it? So those are critical considerations. And sometimes as we, as, as companies get excited about trying to use the technology, those considerations aren't, aren't made at the, at the outset. So we, we always recommend that. And then just making sure that the right combination of technology is being deployed for the solution that you're trying to, to uh, create. So are you using headsets or are you gonna rely on on tablets or on mobile devices, um, you know what type of experiences will you be creating? Are you do you, will you need 3D content? We need 2D content. Just taking a, a view of all of those different considerations at the beginning will help ensure not only is your first project successful, but that there's going to be lots of opportunities beyond. Yeah, thank you very much, Uma. That's really insightful. You know, it's really one of the reasons why the area was created is to help some of those companies from a neutral perspective. And so we've seen and PTC, you know, leading the way in helping companies understand that actually it's a change management program as well as a technology program, but it's no different to any other technology. So taking, you know, the same kind of processes and thinking through the same things really helps companies successfully deploy it. And, and one thing we've seen and we've developed is an ROI calculator, so you can really clearly show the return on investment that companies can get.